Under Silver shuddered upon impact, knocking Jace off his feet. The sea dragons had struck the ship's gyros beneath the hull, disrupting the even keel. The deck heaved upward as the swell from the creature's approach lifted the ship. Suddenly, the vessel lurched, and everything plunged down into the trough. He grabbed for the closest thing nearby. The back of his right hand whacked the railing, sending numbing tingles through his arm. But he managed to snag it with his other hand. Waves washed over him, drenching him. Water rushed up his nose, and for a brief moment, he couldn't breathe. Jace snorted and coughed to clear his airway as his body dangled over the open ocean. His grip slipped. Throwing his arm over the pole, he held onto his wrist until his weight was suspended on the crook of his elbow. People's screams filled his ears as the ship rolled a full 45 degrees starboard, and bodies went sailing into the water. He scanned the hapless victims that flew across the deck from the open doors. They arced through the air as the ship tried to right itself and landed with flat smacks upon the waves. He no longer worried for his own safety. Where was Roan? Had she already gone overboard, or was she trapped inside the ship? Silver lurched again as another strike vibrated through the ship. Something thumped onto the deck and slid into him. At the last second, he grabbed a handful of shirt and realized with horror it was Roan's unconscious figure. Blood trickled down the side of her head where she'd either struck it on something or something had hit her. The boat lulled on the next set of swells. Roan's body slid across the wet boards. Her legs slipped underneath the lowest rail and she began to fall overboard. Chase held on until his fingers felt frozen. Roan! Roan! The ship angled upward. He took the chance to get a better grip, snagging the waistband of her pants as he was afraid her wet shirt would shred. One of them came directly toward him, and Jace braced for impact. The ship lurched the moment the semi-conscious man rammed into them. Jace saw the stark panic on the guy's face as he struggled to keep himself from going overboard. The man managed to grab Jace by the ankle just as he slipped under the railing. The hard jerk on his arm sent excruciating pain through his shoulder and back. Jace cried out and tried to keep his hold on Roan, but the added weight was too much. He felt an agonizing crack as his humerus separated from his shoulder. He was no longer able to keep himself, Roan, and the man digging his fingers into Jace's boot from leaving the ship. If he tried, he knew he'd bleed to death when his arms separated from his body. Jace let go of the railing but kept his fingers on Roan as they sailed over the side and into the waves. The man holding on to him screamed and released Jace's foot just as they all hit the water. Jace gasped as they sank through the cold depths. Somehow, he managed to transfer Roan to his wounded arm in order to use his good arm to swim for the surface. He started kicking as hard as he could, aiming for the surface. A nearly transparent crystalline shape undulated below his feet. It turned and slithered closer, turning its head so that the large black eyes stared directly at him. Judging by its nearly thirty-foot length, it had to be a baby. Jace continued to fight the slow, inevitable drag. His lungs protested, and he could feel his chest beginning to cave in. His head pounded from oxygen deprivation. The sea dragon swam closer, still eyeing its prey. Jace pulled Roan tightly to his chest and kept kicking, although he knew it was useless. The creature circled them once more, opening its mouth before coming in for the kill. 